It's create day my friends. Today I'll be doing two thrift flips and giving some color and whimsy to three little peat pots. Welcome to my channel. Let's get started. My first project is this handmade ceramic pitcher from the thrift store. I've already done one coat of the white spray paint on it as a base coat but you can still kind of see that there's that blue and white sponging and heart effect. So it just needed a little updating. I'm starting with Dixie Bell's Mud Puddle and I'm going to give this two coats. I'm new to the Dixie Bell line of paints. It's a chalk mineral paint and so far my experience with it is really good. It goes on really smooth. For the best results you just make sure your brush is damp when you go in to apply your paint. After the paint was dry, I did give this a coat of matte clear spray paint sealer. I'm going to be using some painting effects that involve a considerable amount of moisture and also applying this transfer, so I wanted to make sure that I had a sealed surface to work on. This transfer comes from the Iron Orchid Designs Brocant book. And so I taped this on at the top so that I could figure out where I could make some slits in order to make this lay down enough to transfer it on. With the curved surface and the ridged edges, it was a little bit more difficult, but it went on just fine. You just have to make sure that you can free up the areas that you need to um, to make it lay down. So I taped it on at the top so that I could remove the um, bottom sheet. And then I once I started uh, getting this on there, the top half was pretty easy to do, but at the bottom I ended up having to cut off the words and go in and make some more slits to get the legs to lay down properly to get them transferred on. So I just use my little transfer stick and start applying the top part of the sheep. Now here's where I had to go in and cut out the little words and I will just apply them separately. By removing that I was able to cut some slits higher up to get those little legs to lay down the way they needed to. So the transfer is completely on there and I can remove the carrier sheet and then burnish it with that same sheet to make sure I get that transfer down in all those little ridges. And here's where I'm just transferring on the part that I had cut off. For the first step of my painting technique, I'm going to use Dixie Bell's putty. And I think it's called ragging. This is almost like sponge painting in reverse. I brush on the putty colored paint and then take a wet rag and just dab on it to remove most of it, just leaving patches of that color behind. I really wanted this to look kind of old and weathered and I like the way this effect works. So I just keep brushing that on and then dabbing it off with a wet rag. Not, it's not a sopping wet rag like, you know, you get it wet, wring it out, that kind of wet. Um, and this is why it needed to be sealed first because there's quite a bit of moisture that's being applied and if that was over just the chalk paint it could start pull, 
pulling that chalk paint back up. Now this section is pretty much dry and that's how it looks so far. To go in around the sheep, I just used a smaller brush to, to get right up next to that outline and then came in with the bigger brush and then I just go around it the same way I do the rest of the picture. For the next layer, I'm mixing my white chalk paint with the Dixie Belle putty colored paint. And it's about a half and half mixture. So I will have a lighter color to go on here. I didn't want to do just a stark white. And with this one, I'm actually putting on even less coverage than I did with the original color. And then doing the same process of just ragging it back off. The next step was to put on some Dixie dirt around the little areas there where the handles attach to the pitcher. So I'm applying some Mod Podge and then with a separate brush I'm attaching that powder Dixie dirt into the Mod Podge and then I can just brush off the excess and you just go back and forth if it's not enough, if it's not dark enough you can add more Mod Podge and add more of the Dixie dirt and you just work with it until you get the look that you want. The last step is to apply clear wax to seal this picture. Brush it on, wipe off the excess, and this little project is done. I love how this one turned out and it was really easy to do. There will be pictures at the end of the video of the finished products. The next project is this little metal bucket that I got at the thrift store. One of the handles had come loose, so I applied E6000 and put my little clip on there and let it dry. Now I'm going to use these little wood ball knobs to make feet on the bottom of the bucket and I'll be applying them with E6000. Here's the package that comes from Hobby Lobby. You get 12 pieces for $4.99. So I glued these on there. I did three of them and then I let this sit overnight. Now instead of molds, I'm going to be using the La Compagna stamp from IOD to put some impressions on my air dry clay. I've stamped impressions onto clay before but never this big of a piece. So I roll out my air dry clay so that it's big enough for this stamp and then I place it on there and using my brayer I get a good impression of the stamp onto the air dry clay. I place it onto my bucket 
and I'm not putting any glue on there yet. I just want to fit this on here, trim off the excess, and then kind of use my fingers to smooth it out so that I'll have the shape that I want to glue on there. So I do a lot of um, smoothing it out with my fingers and getting it the way that I want it to be. And then I can peel that back up and then apply my glue. My idea was that I wanted this to be blended down into the surface of that bucket so that it didn't stick out thick like a mold would, that it would look like it was um, kind of an image that just organically comes out of the surface of the bucket itself. So here I'm just using my palette knife to try and smooth that down. And this took a little time working with it, but by the time I was ready to glue it down, I didn't have a lot of excess smoothing and trimming to do. So now I'm ready to lift this up, and I use my Gorilla Wood Glue, spreading it onto the surface of the bucket rather than the a piece of air dry clay. I just felt like this would be easier. And it did kind of leave a little bit of an outline where I had pressed that down in. So I pretty much knew where to put my glue. I laid my clay piece back onto the bucket, double checking to see if I had it back in the original spot. Once I get it on there, I can just pat it down gently and then kind of go back around those edges to smooth that back down into the bucket. I dip my fingers in water and that aids in the smoothing out process. I repeat the same process with a floral stamp to attach to the other side. I let those dry overnight before applying my joint compound. I've got several of my little plastic clay tools here to figure out which ones I need to spread this on the way I want it to be. My goal is to go in between my clay um, stamped pieces and just fill that in and make it look like it's part of this pottery type um, piece. And sometimes I, you know, the, the palette knives would work, and sometimes I had to glove up and just use my finger to spread it around. And I just worked with it. I wanted it to have kind of a rough texture, but I also wanted this to blend completely in with that clay. And now I just need to let this finish drying. Now I'm applying a matte sealer minus select seal to the bottom of the bucket and the feet and the inside of the bucket just to give it a surface that will help my chalk paint adhere better. I use a fine grit sandpaper to go over the joint compound lightly to remove any high peaks and then remove all that dust with a paintbrush. I used a tacky cloth also to make sure I got rid of all the dust. Time for paint. I'm using Dixie Belle's Putty. I did two coats over the entire bucket. I 
I wanted to use Dixie Belle's Grunge Glaze over this piece to add a little bit of um, darkness into those recessed areas, but this did not show up on this color of paint for some reason. So I ended up um, just wiping it off and then getting out the Van Dyke Brown Glaze and adding that. So I brushed this on around the whole piece and then wiped the excess back with a cloth. These stamped images aren't as deep as like a mold would be, so I didn't get a lot of aging out of this, but I did get enough to add a little bit of character and aging to the piece. And I also applied this glaze to the bottom of the bucket and the feet. So now I'm going to do that same technique I did on the pitcher, only instead of starting with the color putty, because this is already the color putty, I'm starting with that mixture of putty, with mixed with the white chalk paint and I'm just brushing it on and then dabbing it off with my wet rag and at first I was afraid to go in into all those details that I just tried to age but I decided that it um, just wasn't going to look right unless I put it all over the entire thing so I did that and I just tried to use it more sparingly in those areas and um, and it was actually more, most effective on this area with the joint compound because there was more texture there. On the inside, I thought I wanted to add this white wax, but um, I didn't add clear wax first, and it just completely coated that paint, and I thought, no, this is not what I wanted. So I added some clear wax in there, and removed as much of that as I could and then I just went ahead and clear coated the entire inside so that I could do antiquing wax in there instead. And now I'm just adding that antiquing wax, brushing it on and wiping back the excess. For the last step, I am applying a coat of clear wax over the entire bucket and that will do it for this project. Now we are on to our three little peat pots. I'm going to give each one a coat of white chalk paint. And I decided to do three different color schemes so we could see what we like best. I have Tim Holtz's botanical collage paper in black and white, this pretty napkin in pastel, and then this mulberry rice paper that is more like a woodland theme. To make it easier to wrap these papers around this tapered cup, I saw a trick from another YouTuber that you can just roll this peat pot down using a pencil to trace a line at the top at the angle that it rolls down on and then you do the same on the bottom so then you can just cut out that piece and then it will fit around your peat pot without, um, you know how it misaligns. If you just took a straight piece of paper and wrapped it around, how it is tapered at the bottom, it just wouldn't line up, it would overlap. So I thought this was a really useful little tip that I found. I don't remember who I saw it from or I would give them credit for it because I did not realize how simple you could, <laughs> what a simple way to solve this problem. So there I'm tracing the bottom and then I will just take my scissors and cut that shape out. So now I have my piece cut out and I'm just going to go ahead and apply that with my Mod Podge.
When you get back to where you started, you just trim off the excess and then uh, go ahead and press that down with some Mod Podge. And then I apply it at the bottom so that I can fold over that little bit that wraps around the bottom of the peat pot. I'm going to do the same process with my napkin as I did the collage paper. So I am removing the bottom two plies of this napkin so I only have that top layer. And then I'm just tracing that shape of my peat pot onto the napkin like I did before. For the one with the mulberry rice paper, I decided I wanted to just use specific images. So I tore off the edges of this that were just the blank border edges with my tear ruler, and I'm using that same ruler to cut out the specific parts that I think I want to put on this pot. I got this ruler on Amazon, and if you're interested, it is up thou stainless steel metal paper tearing ruler so if you type that in it should come right up if you're interested in it so I just tore off all the potential pieces that I thought I would use and made sure that they were you know long and or tall enough to fit over the peat pot and then I had to decide which ones I wanted to use and those are the three I picked so then I just go ahead and apply the Mod Podge and put those down on there. Now if you've noticed in all of these, I go over that um, rim at the top because I'm going to trim all that off when the glue is dry. I just didn't want to, it's just easier to trim it off afterwards rather than trying to measure and get it exact up to the, where that little rim is. So I get all these glued down, and then on this one I had a little more overhang at the bottom, so I did have to go around and trim that up with my scissors, and then just Mod Podge that down onto the bottom of the peat pot. So once these are dry, I just use my utility knife to go along that rim and kind of cut through and tear that excess paper off. And then I also used a fingernail file to remove any little bits and pieces that were kind of coming up over that rim. And then it was time for a final coat of Mod Podge on the outside of the peat pot. Now it's time to paint that upper rim. I'm using blushed pink rose for the first one. And I'm just going to go ahead and go around the entire rim and then at the very top. The next one gets a color called Cascade. And then I do black on the third one. When those are dry, I do a coat of the clear wax first. Wipe that off and then do the white wax. I added some jute twine to these just under the lip of that rim. I used hot glue to just wrap it around two times. I have these little wooden rectangles that came in a bag of different wood shapes from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to give each of them a coat of my white chalk paint. 
Then I want to add some script stamps with Stazon ink and jet black. So I just ink up my stamp and apply it onto my little wood piece and then clean off that stamp and move on to the next one. Now I got these little wooden cutouts from the Dollar Tree. So I'm just going to pick out three different butterflies and paint them the corresponding color of each peat pot. And then I will cover my little wooden pieces with some clear wax. And then I can go in with some antiquing wax on the sides and the back of the wood pieces. I just absolutely love the way these turned out. They are so cute. Now I'm going to do some white wax over my painted butterflies. Next, I just cut out some strips of cheesecloth and I'm going to tie this around in a knot. I do one off to one side and I do the other one in the middle and then the other one off to the other side. And then I'm just going to hot glue that in place and then hot glue my little butterfly on top of the cheesecloth. Then I just trim off the edges of the cheesecloth, and that is it for this one. And I can go ahead and do the same process with the other two. So now with that same tear ruler, I'm just ripping up some pieces of book page to add some interest to the interior of my little pots. I'm filling them with the crinkled brown, uh, it's like the, the bag filler stuff you get for gifts. And I'm adding in my little book pages. I'm just kind of folding them up quickly in my fingers just to give them kind of a crinkled effect. Add them to the pot and then nestle in my little wood piece with the butterfly on there. And these are all complete. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you find my content useful and will consider subscribing. If you are already a subscriber, thank you so much for your continued support. I really appreciate it. Let's take a look at how everything turned out.